A very good morning once again and many thanks for staying with us. At this opportune moment, I know you're wondering how best to navigate the rowdy roads this fine Wednesday morning. Our reporter Stephen Mbide is in Bugolobi to help you with that. A very good morning, Mr. Mbide. What's the latest? Yes, good morning to you, Romeo Boseko. It is sunny on this Wednesday morning from this other side of Nakawa East. And this How? is Bugolobi, as we just said. And he, from here, uh, for those people coming from Chitintare, Luzira, Mutungo, and you're trying to use the Old Port Bay Road, it's from this Old Port, Old Port Bay Road uh, shell. That's where you're going to be uh, finding the delays. The delays are beginning from here uh, for you proceeding towards the city direction or going towards the industrial area. From here, you're going to be losing more time uh, before you connect to the Bugolobi market for those who are trying to connect to Bandari Rise uh, that will be linking you towards the Lothuri Avenue there. Uh, at least uh, you'll be spending close to 30 minutes between here and the other side of either 5th, 6th uh, and 80th streets there as well as 7th streets of industrial area. It's really, really a heavy bumper to bumper slow uh, flow of traffic here heading towards that direction. But if you know you're heading towards the city direction through uh, the other side of the Wampeo Avenue roundabout there just after the the Lufla or the city abattoir, they are just know that after connecting through the junction linking you towards the 5th Street, uh, proceeding towards the U.S. Embassy stores there, at least there is less congestion. You'll be out of this uh, heavy traffic congestion, and then you'll be finding it as you approach the Minister of Internal Affairs next to the Police Engineering Department. But if you know you're coming from the city direction and you're coming towards the Mutungo, Bugolobi, and Ruzila areas, as you can see the pictures on your screen, uh, there is less congestion. Just feel free to use this old Port Bay Road. And if you know you're connecting towards Chireka, or uh, Chinawataka side and connecting through this uh, the Chireka Road, then just know that it's also clear for now to and from Nambole or Chinawataka side, uh, you'll be seeing the pictures there on your screen, are those for the people coming from Chireka side, Kunya, uh, Kunya side. And this is what is happening here on Morning at NTV, the traffic update coming to you live on Morning at TV. I'll be taking you back to studio uh, for now, and I'll be back later on with the real issues, real, real people on the ground later on. But for now, back to the studio. Stephen Imbido, Pepe, so you come out. Always great seeing you, my brother, and a very good morning once again. Stephen Imbido reporting live from Bugolobi. Now you know how best to navigate the rowdy roads this fine Wednesday morning. We, let's get into our very first conversation of the day, the Deposit Protection Fund. What does it do? It's a legal entity that is created by the central bank that is mandated to protect, yes, depositors in the event of a failure of a contributing institution like a bank. I do have the Chief Executive Officer for the Deposit Protection Fund, Mrs. Julia Claire Olima Oyet, and she's here with me in studio. Very good morning. Good morning, Romeo. Let's start with the, easy, with the easy stuff. What is the Deposit Protection Fund? Yes, uh, Romeo, the Deposit Protection Fund is an agency that has been set up by the government of Uganda mm -hmm. to ensure that in that unlikely event that your bank is closed, right. you will not lose everything. The Deposit Protection Fund will give you up to 10 million mm -hmm. shillings. So it doesn't matter if I have 100, I'll just get 10. It doesn't matter if you have 100, you'll just get 10. How do I recover the rest? The rest will be recovered once the liquidation process starts taking place mm -hmm. and assets of that institution are being sold. From those proceeds, we shall be able to pay you. Mm -hmm. But I also keep emphasizing that deposit insurance is for the uninformed, unsophisticated mm -hmm. customer. But once you have more than that 10 million, you need to be conscious about how your financial mm -hmm. institution is performing. Indeed. Yes. Ms. Claire, what is the uh, mandate of the Deposit Protection Fund? Yes, the mandate of the Deposit Protection Fund is to instill confidence in the financial sector that no matter what happens, mm -hmm. you will not lose all that you have put in place. Mm -hmm. That is the mandate of the Deposit Protection Fund. We contribute to ensuring mm -hmm confidence in the financial sector mm. is maintained regardless of what is happening. Indeed. And what yes. challenges have you encountered while trying to execute your mandate? Yes, uh, Romeo, the challenges that we are encountering mm. is that we need to have systems in place to be able to pay you the depositor very mm -hmm. conveniently. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're putting in place an IT system. It's a sophisticated system. And that is why we need support from the contributing institutions mm. and also you, the depositors, to update your information. Mm. Give them your mobile money account number or give them your alternative bank account number so that in that unlikely event, we pay you immediately. 
immediately. Mm -hmm. We don't have an out, uh, outcry in the country. What is a contributing institution in this regard? A contributing institution is that institution which has been licensed mm -hmm. by the Bank of Uganda. And that's why the DPF works very closely with the Bank of Uganda. It is those ones that uh, contribute to the Deposit Protection mm -hmm. Fund. And therefore, we call them contributing institutions. Mm -hmm. yes. And how is the Deposit Protection Fund funded? Uh, the Deposit Protection Fund gets premiums from the contributing institutions. Right. They pay annual premiums, which is a computation of a small percentage of the deposits that they hold at over a particular calendar year. So how does the Deposit Protection Fund compute mm -hmm. and actually collect all these annual premiums? Yes. Uh, we compute it by using a percentage, which is 0.2% of the deposits that the contributing institution is holding over a, a calendar mm. year, which would be t 12 months, and then we send out notices. 12 months? Yeah. I see. We do an average of the 12 months, get that amount, and do 0.2 percent Just like the normal that. insurer? Yeah, just okay. uh, very close to the normal mm. insurance. And then we send out notices to the contributing institutions, mm. inform them that you're supposed to pay this premium, mm -hmm. you pay it within a 21-day period, and I'm happy to note that most of the contributing institutions comply. They know their obligation and they ensure that they make the payment on time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how does the DPF, the Deposit Protection Fund, compute and collect risk-adjusted premiums? Yes, risk-adjusted premiums is very similar. A risk-adjusted premium is just an extra cost that uh, the institution has to pay if its performance is not so good mm -hmm. because it's more risky to the fund because there it, it, it is possible that we might have to pay. Therefore, we have to get a little bit more from you so that the depositor is not uh, left disappointed. Are we talking about a new bank or a new contributing institution? Like mm -hmm. you're new in the game and we don't trust you, so we, uh, we ask for that risk-adjusted premium. Uh, no, you don't have what to What happens? You don't have to be new in the game. Mm. As you know, business, sometimes you have ups and downs. Right. And when the downs come in and maybe your rating is not as good as it was before, mm. therefore you are more risky to the financial sector. Mm. You're more risky to the DPF. And therefore, higher risk, you have to also give us a higher uh, return. Mm -hmm. Yes. How, how does the Deposit Protection Fund keep this money you get from contributing institutions? Yes, uh, Romeo, we keep this money safely. We mm -hmm. invest it in treasury bills and treasury bonds, right. the central bank. Yes. Mm -hmm. The central bank. Yes. How soon can someone get this money in the event of a contributing uh, institution failing? Yes. According to the current law, we're supposed to start paying within 90 days of that institution uh, going under. Mm. But all these systems that I've talked about that we're putting in place, we want to make that faster. Mm. We want it to be that an institution is closed today and maybe you even get your money tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But that depends a lot on the work that we do together with mm -hmm. the depositors and the contributors. What factors system. would be needed to be put in place to make that happen? That would be the IT system I've talked right. about. That mm. would be having updated information with, my contributing in with institution. your bank or your oh, yeah. contributing institution mm. so that we know Romeo, we can identify you, we have your national ID details, we have your alternative bank account or we have your mobile number. We easily compute how much we're supposed to pay you using our sophisticated IT system and we remit that money mm. very fast to you. Are all financial institutions members of the Deposit Protection Fund? The financial institutions that are regulated mm. by the Bank of Uganda mm -hmm. are part of the Deposit Protection Fund. Mm -hmm. There are other financial institutions that are regulated by other organs of the mm -hmm. government, and those would fall under a, probably a different protection scheme. Institutions such as? The microfinance. Mm -hmm. We have UMRA that regulates that. Then we have insurance companies. Those are all part of the financial mm -hmm. sector. We, that is for the um, IRA. Insurance Regulatory Authority, and so on. There are a number of uh, agencies that mm. have been put in place to ensure that the financial sector remains sound. And of course, Mrs. Olima, we are dealing with a global pandemic. Mm. 38 million cases, yes. A million deaths, yes. Mm. Maybe some 26 million recoveries. But then in Uganda, it's 9,945. It has wrecked havoc on our economy, just like the global scale. But then as it is, how has COVID-19 affected the activities of the Deposit Protection Fund? It okay. might affect the contributing institution and in mm -hmm. turn affect the DPF. So how so? Yes. Uh, Romeo, you, you bring up a good uh, topic, and that's a topical issue that we're addressing now. 
Of course, the Deposit Protection Fund, as I've indicated, works closely with the central bank. So the central bank has put in place various mechanisms to help the financial institutions overcome or be able to pull through these difficult uh, times. They have liquidity windows that are in place. And us as the Deposit Protection Fund, we're confident that those uh, mechanisms that have put in, been put in place will keep the financial institutions strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, on the other side also, as uh, an organization, we also contributed to the call from the president uh, that uh, we should uh, join hands together as Ugandans and ensure that we put contributions aside to help Ugandans who are affected mm -hmm. by COVID. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And do the depositors need to pay money to the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda? No. No depositor has to pay money to mm. the Deposit Protection Fund. That is insurance that is given to the depositor by the DPF and has backup from mm. the government. Mm. In other words, that if the DPF did not have all the money, the government would mm. step in and mm. help us to pay that money. Mm. So if you're a depositor, you don't need to go to the central bank to look for the deposit protection fund or look for Mrs. Olima. No, mm. you, have to, you, just, you just have to go to your contributing institution, yeah. which is the bank. Mm. The bank will do what it has to do to mm. contribute the annual premiums uh, mm. to the deposit protection fund. So you don't have to do anything or pay any money. You just have to be a customer of Bank A, Stambik Bank is a partner, so I can say uh, their name. So if you're with a Stambik Bank, yeah. you, all you have to do is update your details, national mm -hmm. ID mm -hmm. and so forth. In the event of that bank closing down, yes, Mrs. Olima Oyet and her people would be able to give you some of that money if they have all the details. But if they don't, it will take 90 days or more. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how I would know that my deposits are protected. How can one know? You can know that your deposits are protected when you enter a financial institution, look out for the sign mm. that this financial institution is regulated by the mm. Bank of Uganda. And now that the DPF is on board, allow me to share this uh, poster with the Please viewers yes. that also look out for this poster yeah. that should be in the banking halls. Look out for these posters that should be at the ATM. Mm -hmm. Romeo, yes. It, it has a deposit protection ATM. fund of Uganda. Your deposits yes. are protected up yes. to 10 million Uganda shillings. So yes. if you enter mm -hmm. that banking institution, they need to be having one of these stickers to actually ensure that they are actually uh, certified by the deposit protection fund. Please yes. go ahead. Mm -hmm. What happens to the rest of the money? Uh, if you give me my 10 million. Yes, what happens to the rest of the money is that now you will have to be patient and wait for that liquidation mm -hmm. process. And then we shall pay you a certain amount depending on how much we recover mm. from the liquidation process. How long does the liquidation process take? Uh, Romeo, liquidation processes don't take a very short time, but I'm happy to say that the Bank of Uganda is putting in place processes to mm. ensure that that liquidation takes as short as is possible. Mm. Yes. And what kinds of deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda? Yes, all your deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda because you'd have probably a savings account, right. a current account, and a fixed deposit. Mm -hmm. We protect all those up to the 10 million mark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, pertinent question, how does the Deposit Protection Fund contribute to financial stability? Yes, The Deposit Protection Fund contributes to financial stability mm. by instilling confidence in you, the depositor, that in that unlikely event that your financial institution is mm. closed, mm. you will not lose everything. Right. At least you'll get an immediate uh, payment from the Deposit Protection Fund. Secondly, like you stated, <coughs> if a bank is risky, mm. it has to pay more. And no bank really wants to pay more, mm. and therefore they improve on their risk management systems mm. constantly to mm. ensure that that uh, extra cost is not borne by themselves. Mm. And also you, the depositors, contribute to ensuring that uh, financial sector stability mm. is uh, upheld by ensuring that you're reading what is happening in the financial sector. And therefore the financial institutions then know that if the public is conscious, I need to put in place systems to ensure that I perform very well. Otherwise, they might move to another mm. institution. Indeed. So it is a, a, a mix of many ways yes. in which we contribute. And uh, finally, this is the last question. At what point might uh, the DPF be called upon to pay protected depositors in a minute? Yes. 
DPF would be called upon by the Bank of Uganda mm -hmm. if the Bank of Uganda has exhausted all the different tools that mm -hmm. it has mm -hmm. to ensure that your deposits are just transferred from one institution mm -hmm. to another. If that event happens, then they would inform us and we have to get ready to pay you as fast as possible. Mrs. Julia Claire Olima Oyet, she is the executive, the ex chief executive officer for the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to us. Okay, thank you so much, Romeo. We need to continue me. reiterating this information for the people. Please, please register with yes. your bank yes. so that when it closes, yes. there's money for you tomorrow. Yes. My name is Romeo Busiko and you're still watching Morning at NTV. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with another conversation about the Demon Trust Bank and Hamish Chigundu case. We'll be right back.